Okay, hey guys. So, uh, uh, again, we're coming back to Osculator and Ableton and X32 and playing around with connecting all kinds of stuff with all kinds of stuff. So I've had a few days now to uh, dink around with um, OSC Send in Ableton. And uh, this, is, this is a pretty useful thing for any kind of time domain um, widgets that you want to send to any kind of console function. Um, or really anything that requires time domain. So think frequency um, sweeps, filter sweeps. Um, you could do things like delay swells that are on beat, um, all mappable uh, and oh, excuse me, all um, lockable to time domain within a musical frame. So um, I've got this session here that I've set up, and um, you can see I've got a few instances of OSC Send that I've modified. And what's slightly irritating about OSC Send is that when you first uh, open this thing up, it will automatically reset your host IP address and your port number to the default uh, uh, of something sort of arbitrary that this guy had set up. So it took me a minute to figure this out. And if you come in here to this P initialization thing, this is going to initialize these two values here whenever you first uh, open up this, this uh, any instance of uh, the OSC send. In my case, I really just want it to default always to the console uh, for when I'm, I'm doing any kind of show with this thing. It's probably going to be with, uh, with the X32 at least for this this particular uh, this particular trial. So what you have to do is you have to come in here to um, actually let's see come over here how did I do this? Oop. Oop. Did I come in here? Ah, there we go. So it has to be locked. You double click the device um, and then you can come in here to this sub patch. And then you can adjust this set uh, uh, value for both the IP address and port, and then that, that will default uh, your uh, max patch here in Ableton to whatever this is whenever you reopen uh, Ableton. So if you have just a particular thing that you're trying to uh, uh, use over and over again, I would definitely suggest uh, setting up that IP address, otherwise uh, you may run into issues if for some reason your, your Ableton session crashes and you have to reboot during a show, that would be a pain in the butt. So, just to show you a little bit about what I've got going on here, um, we've got a couple of different things mapped. So, uh, I am using clip automation. Um, and in this case here, we are using the track volume on these DCA faders. These are controlling DCA 1 through 8 on the X32. Um, and so I'm, I've just sort of created myself a Vegas mode um, scene here just to kind of test out how much I can send X32 at one time and, and still have it uh, respond without getting all funky. So we're using this um, track volume envelope and I've done you know, a couple of different things um, so you can kind of see here. And we used uh, some different curves on some of these uh, automation parameters here as well. And then if I come over here to my master, um, you can see that I've mapped those track volumes uh, to these DCA addresses on the output section of this uh, third instance of OSC send. So send one and send two are basically set up as faders eight through 16, 1 through 16 there, 1 through 8, 9 through 16. Um, and you can see that I did not map a couple of these, and that's because those ones are linked uh, in X32, and when I had those mapped, they were they were fighting each other and getting some weirdness there. So uh, just bear that in mind if you do any of that kind of mapping. Um, and my fader automation, I did a little bit differently. Um, because uh, a channel, I'm uh, probably going to want to be able to automate more than just fader volume. What I did is I added um, an EQ8. Um, and what that allows me to do is now every one of these knobs, uh, frequency, gain, Q, uh, for each eight of these bands is um, usable as a parameter for... Uh, clip envelope 
automation. So for instance, if I wanted to do, I don't know, a filter sweep slash, uh, I don't know, compression adjustment uh, over a period of time on a particular channel while also adjusting the volume, I could do all of those things simultaneously uh, by, by drawing in some of these automation parameters within a, within a particular time frame. And you can see this is this is musically divided, so um, we could definitely lock this into whatever you want. You can e increase, decrease the time uh, at any time. Um, <coughs> so if you decide you you know you've made this cool four bar thing and you really just need it to go a little bit faster, it's not a pain in the butt to program later on down the road. So um, there's that. Um, I think that is all we really need to know about input parameters there. Uh, so if I come over here and hit my Vegas mode button, which I happen to have mapped via OSC to uh, MIDI CC, um, we can see some interesting things that are going to happen in uh, X33. Here we go. It's beautiful. Anyway, I just hit the stop button there. Um, so that's where we're at right now. I'm going to keep fiddling around with some of these other parameters. Um, the Vegas mode, again, was just kind of to, to see how much I could feed this thing without it freaking out. Um, next, I'm going to try doing some simultaneous uh, parameter changes on FX sends uh, and returns so that I can do things like crank the feedback uh, and then also kill the, the delay feed uh, for a particular sort of uh, um, repeating pattern on certain types of uh, songs where you're going to want that nice big feedback moment without, you know, actually killing everybody. And uh, anyway, that's it for tonight. Hope this has been useful for some of you and not too rambly. Have a good evening.